Hi! Welcome to our art exhibit that will bring you back to the ancient, classical, and medieval period. Here, we will be exhibiting the most famous arts from different periods and briefly explain their importance to our history, our present, and most probably, our future. Let's go and know more about these art forms. In the Paleolithic period, Erlinas lived in caves or simple huts and teepees and were hunters and gatherers. They used basic stone and home tools as well as crude stone for axes for hunting birds and wild animals. This began roughly around 40,000 years ago and lasted through the Pleistonist Ice Age, which ended about 8,000 years ago. One of the most famous art of this era is the Venus of Willendorf. Venus of Willendorf is 11.1 cm tall sculpture. Venus figurine is estimated to have been made 30,000 BCE. It is carved from olitic limestone that is not local to the area and tinted with red ore. Depicted as a nude woman with exaggerated sexual features, represented an early fertility fetish, perhaps a mother goddess. These ages were the major changes in agriculture, modification of stone tools, and raw materials were being modified. Architecture the Neolithic were used as protection from any weather in ceramics and used at people ceremonies. During this age, megaliths were created by scholars. This is a large prehistoric stone that been used to construct a structure or monument, not either alone or together with the other stones. Megaliths are often under stone that are used in ceremonial or ritualistic structure and also well known because this one has a better preservation and they are often found in area burial sites. The most prevalent type of megalithic structure is the portal dome or commonly known as dolmen. Dolmen are large copstone elevated at an agate and held up by a dual standing stone that is also used in any ritual significance. The importance of Neolithic Age of Art is that when we first find a good evidence for any religious practices, we find a virtual inspiration for the fine arts. In this period as well, there were more images of detailed form of human than animals and it began to be used as ornamentation. The Middle Age started in 4500 BC and ended when writing was discovered. This is the last period in prehistory. At this time, societies in Europe began to produce metals. Changes in metal objects, in styles, and in burial rituals have been used to subdivide the period. The Metal Age is divided into three periods. Copper Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. The Copper, Bronze, and Iron Ages began around 4500 BC with the discovery of metallurgy or the technique of metalworking and it continued up until 1000 BC. From the Bronze Age, we have Abydos, which is pottery that is found in Palestine by the tomb of the first dynasty kings. They made a specific jar called as Abydos Ware Juglet. The red slipped and burnished jugs from the E.D. 2nd period are known to archaeologists as Abydos ware. These juglets were not made in Egypt but in Israel or Palestine. The Metal Age was a time of important technological advancement and production of these metals was an important step to human history. It made tasks like farming and other economic activities easier. Art is an essential aspect of any civilization once the basic human needs have been taken care of such as food, shelter, some form of 
we will need the law and a religious belief. Culture began producing artwork and often all of these developments occur more or less simultaneously. These early images were crude in comparison to later developments but still express an important value of Egyptian cultural consciousness. Egyptian society was based on the concept of harmony known as Ma'at which had come into being at the dawn of creation and sustained the universe. All Egyptian art is based on perfect balance because it reflects the ideal world of the gods. The same way these gods provided all good gifts for hum humanity. So the artwork was imagined and created to provide a use. Egyptian art was always first and foremost functional. No matter how beautifully a statue may have been crafted, its purpose was to serve as a home for a spirit or a god. An amulet would ha have been designed to be attractive but aesthetic beauty was not the driving force in its creation. Protection Tomb paint, Paintings Temple tablets, home and palace, gardens all were created so that their form suited an important functions and in many cases, this function was a reminder of the eternal nature of life and the value of personal and community stability. Emerging from a dark age and last vestiges of geometric period, Greek artists began using a number of new methods and tools into their work. For the first time in almost 800 years, artists began to create more realistic human forms. New technologies enabled pottery to be more colorful than it ever before. This period of innovation is, called, is known as the Archaic Period, and it lasts roughly from 700 BC to 480 BC. Some archaic art shows an Egyptian influence, certainly in regard to the placement of the feet, but much of it seems to be original to the Greeks. One point of originality in particular is the small scene in an archaic statue, almost always staring back to the viewer. Following this came the red figure pottery or black forms background for designs in the clay's natural red. Archaic period artists consciously experimented with both of these techniques, a particularly notable early innovation. Also, during this period, Potters in Greece began to apply colored glaze to their ceramic pieces, creating two brand new styles in their direction. Black fear pottery came first in which black glaze was applied to create designs on red pottery. Asia Rome is the one of the biggest empire in the human history. That includes the Roman art which was broad and was clearly influenced by the artistic practices during the classical Greek era. Romans took whatever they could learn from existing practices and develop their own artistic style. One of the most outstanding pieces of the Asian art is the fresco wall from the House of Libya. It's a unique painted garden from the House of Libya that will surround you and immerse yourself in a new serene dimension. It consists of various exotic birds, wild vegetation, different species of flora and fauna, Various of flowers, plants, and trees that been painted in a marble wall. During the early imperial period, gardens also became popular motifs for mural painted on the walls of villa interiors. The painting is a gauge for social and political significance. Roman artists mostly painting mosaic murals and emphasizing natural themes such as landscapes and narrative themes from literature and mythology. Roman art also sculpted gods, heroes, and real people in their era. The greatest innovation of Roman painters were the development of the landscape painting that is used as decorative murals featuring seascape and landscape and were painted by the skilled interiors. The Byzantine Empire was a vast and powerful civilization with origins of being traced to 330 AD. When the Roman Empire, Constantine I, had dedicated a new Rome on the site of ancient Greek colony of Byzantium. Due to these origins, Byzantine art is almost exclusively depicted in 
subjects of subjects such as Virgin Mary, Jesus, and the scenes from the Bible. This subject of matters was also encouraged by the church, which held a vast amount of wealth and influence in the, in the Byzantine society. One of the most famous mosaics from this period can still be seen in the Hagia Sophia and depicts Christ as a Pantof Pantofrator or the ruler of the universe. One of the most famous artworks that comes from the Byzantine period is the Banalian Child. The Banalian Child is a painting produced by Duccio di Buinsegna in 1300. The work in this painting is characterized as the most admired artwork in Duccio. In this painting, Milodona is depicted carrying a child with her hands. Byzantine Christian art had the triple purpose of beautifying a building, instructing a literate on matters vital for the welfare of their soul, and encouraging the faithful that they were in the correct path of service to salvation. For this reason, the interiors of Byzantine churches were covered with paintings and mosaics. Roman skill art is a combination of Roman, Ottonian, Carolingian, Byzantine, and local Germanic tradition. They resulted from the great expansion of monotheism. The combination of Asian Roman and Byzantine and it was clearly influenced by the Byzantine art, especially in painting. One of the most well-known in Roman skill art besides painting is architectures. Which is made by a massive quality thick walls, strong arches, sturdy pillars, barren boats, large towers, and decorative arcading. The Roman skill style was the first one to spread across the whole in Catholic Europe. The most thriving monastery in Yomatsky style is the Pilgrimage Church. A two symmetrical tower spring from the west facade by the stone walls that is supported by the tall to throwing pillars that heighten the vertical effect. The coronation of the Virgin is a painting by the Italian early Renaissance painter Fra Angelico executed around 1432, it is now the Uffizi Gallery of Florence. The artist executed another coronation of the Virgin that is now in the Lover in Paris. The painting has a glided background, a heritage of medieval painting over which is a small paradise where the coronation is being held. It Trace Christ crowning the Virgin. Both are surrounded by rays which are executed through an engraving technique above the glided background, which symbolize the divine light. On the left in the foreground is Saint Igidius, titular of the church which originally housed the work. His space is perhaps modeled on that of Antonio Pierosi, the former prior of the convent of San Marco to which Fra Angelico belonged. He is followed by Cenobius of kneeling Mary Magdalene. In the last row are musician angels. The structure of the work and the use of real color show the influence of Angelico's master Lorenzo Monaco who executed another coronation of the Virgin, also in the UPC. The ancient laurel crown in the Olympic Games signify victory and a crown in gold and precious stone indicate power and wealth. In Christian iconography, the crown developed religious meaning. In an early mosaic in Ravenna, Italy virgin represent a crown to the child and Mary as a gesture of humility. A crown Mary is usually seen in Jesuit twist, which stressed her earthly loyal descent from the house of the bead, something accorded considerable importance in the Middle Ages. Christianity, after all, can be a fairly male dominated affair. Art has truly impacted our lives differently with its unique meaning and amazing visuals. We should appreciate art more because they are made by skillful artists ever since. Art techniques are evolving. From the prehistoric arts up until the medieval era, arts convey messages and significances. 
That's all for this art exhibit and we hope you learned a lot. Until next time!